Now that it's the summer break, it's now time to review the season so far for the big teams in Formula 1 being Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. And for these three teams, it has been a season so far of dominance, failure and progression. But how exactly has it happened for these big teams? Well, in today's video, I'm going to analyse the first 12 races and the first half of 2019 for all of these teams. And look at the ups and downs of 2019 so far. So if you want to find out what I have to say in terms of who has had a good and not so good first half of 2019, make sure to check out this video. So first, let's start off with the Silver Arrows Mercedes, who of course in 2018 won another Drivers and Constructors Championship. But after pre-season testing, it wasn't looking so great apparently. As according to certain news outlets, Mercedes' car was not actually that quick. And according famously to Autosport, it was half a second slower than Ferrari. Of course, though in Australia, we would truly see if that was the case. But just like Thanos, Mercedes snapped their fingers and in Australia, they obliterated the field. By locking out the front row by three quarters of a second and dominantly getting a 1-2 finish. But was this just one good race or could they continue this for the rest of 2019? Well in Bahrain pace wise they did not have the quickest car but they did capitalise massively on Ferrari's misfortune. And also their own mistakes. And somehow someway went on to claim another 1-2 finish in Bahrain. And whilst Ferrari were down in Shanghai and Baku, they seized the moment and went and got another two 1-2 finishes. And by the time we got to the European season, Mercedes had Ferrari completely beat. As at the Spanish Grand Prix, again they were three quarters of a second quicker and in the race again destroyed them. And claimed also their fifth 1-2 finish in a row, but once we got to Monaco... Things were not looking so dominant anymore for this team. As even though they did win in Monaco, they only just about did it because of Max Verstappen not getting past Lewis Hamilton because of Hamilton's great defence, but also because Max had a penalty. But still, they were able to come out on top. And even in Canada, where they didn't have the best car, they still somehow came out on top. Mostly because of a BS penalty, but they still had to be there to claim the race win. And it wouldn't be till Austria until another team could hope to get close to this team. Where in Austria, they were finally defeated. As Ferrari were much faster during the weekend, and on race day, they suffered overheating issues. Leading to them only finishing in P3 and P5. But then the Beast woke up again at Silverstone and claimed a dominant 1-2 finish. Then came Hockenheim which is possibly one of the worst races in the team's history. As they were leading 1-2 and two in the classic wet dry race and then it all fell apart due to errors by the team and the drivers. And the best they could get from that race was P9 and it seemed as though at that time the team was quite down. But then they responded brilliantly at the final race before the summer break in Hungary to claim a fantastic win for Lewis Hamilton in Budapest. By having a very good car and designing a very, very good strategy. Ending off, you have to say, a very, very successful first 12 races of 2019. But as this stat shows, the team are definitely being caught by Ferrari and Red Bull as the season is going on. Because in the first six races, they scored 257 points. They claimed also six race wins, five pole positions and 12 podium finishes. But in the next six races, things got harder. As their points tally dropped to 181, they had four wins three pole positions and seven podiums, which is, of course, still very, very good, but not as good as the first six races. So without a doubt, this team is being caught, and that's a big, big reason for why you should continue to watch Formula 1 until the end of the season. But now let's get on to the driver's battle between Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. Now, in the first five or six races, things were very close at the very top of the driver's championship. Valtteri Bottas was looking good, looking very quick and qualifying, and has 
in the first 12 races looked very quick in qualifying but after monaco where lewis claimed a brilliant win he really has romped away from valtteri bottas and valtteri rarely has got the better of lewis hamilton ever since the monaco grand prix and for me lewis has been the better driver valtteri has done very well especially in qualifying against lewis hamilton but i think lewis will claim his sixth world championship and i think valtteri bottas even though his form in the last couple of races hasn't been that good. I think Valtteri, as I'll get onto in a future video coming out in about a week's time, I think Valtteri has done enough to claim a seat at the team for 2020 for sure. But as I've said, going forward for the rest of 2019, because Ferrari and Red Bull are catching up to them, it will be a tough final nine races of the season. But of course, being the great team that they are, it's going to be very, very hard to stop them. But now let's go on to Ferrari, who have had, let's say, an interesting 2019. So in pre-season testing, despite a couple small reliability issues, it looked as though Ferrari had the best car on the grid. And in terms of the Constructors' Championship, they were the favourites going into 2019. But after the first 12 races, testing feels a long, long time ago. As once they got to Melbourne, because of reliability issues and packaging issues with their bodywork, they were miles off the pace. And because of that, got their asses whipped by Mercedes. And even got beat by the Red Bull of Max Verstappen to a podium finish. But maybe that was just one bad race. Maybe things, once we got to Bahrain, would actually improve and showcase how quick the Ferrari car of 2019 really was. And well, in qualifying, it did, because they locked out the front row and were looking great during the first half of that Grand Prix for a 1-2 finish and a great race win. But then in true Ferrari style, things completely unraveled. As Sebastian Vettel, right after his second pit stop, bottled it, lost his front wing, spun the car and finished back in fifth place because of it. And then with about 10 laps to go, with Charles Leclerc leading the Bahrain Grand Prix for Ferrari, his power unit, not for the first time and not for the last time, let him down. Costing Ferrari their first win of 2019 and Charles Leclerc finished in P3. That was just an omen for things to come. Once we got to Shanghai, Ferrari were not on the pace of Mercedes at that Grand Prix and were seemingly only fighting themselves with Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc. But no matter, here we come to Baku where Ferrari are expected to be very, very quick. And in practice, Ferrari did look very, very quick. But again, in true Ferrari style, they completely bottled it. As Charles Leclerc crashed in Q2 and Sebastian Vettel could not hook up a lap to get pole position or even be on the front row of the grid. Leading to another massively unsuccessful weekend for Ferrari. But Ferrari would stop at nothing to try and close the gap to Mercedes as they brought the new Spec 2 power unit to the Spanish Grand Prix in a hope to try and close that gap despite not coming to a circuit where power is important and due to the ferrari car design being absolutely terrible they got their asses kicked again in spain results wise though things started to improve at monaco as sebastian vettel surprisingly finished in p2 but in no means was it a good weekend for ferrari as they completely destroyed charles leclerc's home grand prix for ferrari as they failed to send him out at the end of qualifying one to go and get into qualifying two meaning he was knocked out and then in the race, in an act of desperation, he crashed out of the Grand Prix. But in Canada, for the first time since Bahrain, Ferrari had the fastest car that weekend. And were looking great for race victory, especially after Sebastian Vettel's first and only pit stop of the Grand Prix, where he maintained the lead. But then Lewis Hamilton started to close up to him and put on the pressure. And in true Sebastian Vettel style, he bottled it, went across the grass at turn four and got a penalty for what he did. Again, as I said earlier, I don't agree with the penalty, but Sebastian did bottle it. And that, of course, led to Sebastian getting a five-second time penalty and Lewis won the Grand Prix. So Ferrari again, unsuccessful that weekend. But they were not 
happy with the penalty and the result, so they decided to appeal against the penalty. Because according to Ferrari, they have some brilliant new evidence to try and overturn this decision. What is that brilliant new evidence I hear you asking? It is of course, Karim Chandhok's opinion of the incident and his analysis of the incident. By no surprise, the stewards disagreed with their evidence and thus told Ferrari at the next Grand Prix in France to do one. And Ferrari's punishment for supplying such poor evidence to overturn the penalty on the track in France was to get destroyed again by the Silver Arrows. A thing they are clearly getting used to. But in Austria, for the third time in 2019, they had the best car. And maybe for Ferrari, it was third time lucky. They were finally going to get that first win of 2019 and try and make it now a properly successful season. But again... They failed. First off, Sebastian Vettel was on a two-stop and failed to get a podium even though he was very quick at the end of the Grand Prix. But Charles Leclerc was leading the Grand Prix for such a long time until Max Verstappen happened. Where Max came launching up to the back of him and because of Charles Leclerc's questionable defence, Max passed him for the lead. Meaning that despite Ferrari being the closest team most of the time to Mercedes in the first eight races, that Mercedes won, they were not the first team to beat them in 2019 in terms of getting a race win. It was Red Bull. The embarrassment for Ferrari just continues. Then at Silverstone, Ferrari did actually have in qualifying at least quite a good car, but in the race had no grip whatsoever to even dream of a race win. But because of Sebastian Vettel taking out Max Verstappen during the Grand Prix in a battle for P3, Charles Leclerc, despite being massively screwed over on the strategy, finished in P3. So I guess a moderately successful weekend? But when we came to Hockenheim after practice, things were looking great for Ferrari. As they looked as though, when it came to qualifying pace, that they could absolutely get pole position, if not, look out the front row possibly. But then Ferrari went full Ferrari. As Sebastian Vettel's turbo failed in qualifying one and Charles Leclerc had a fuel pump issue at the start of qualifying three. Meaning they would start the Grand Prix from 10th and 20th, not 1st and 2nd. I'll be honest, after days like that, I'm not sure how you can even be a Ferrari fan. But in the race, things did improve, I guess. Sebastian Vettel came from the back of the grid to finish in P2 despite in the wet for most of the time not being that good and Charles Leclerc whilst up in P4 on the dry tyres when it started to rain he bottled it and put it in the wall leading to what I will call a mostly bad weekend. In the final race before the summer break in Hungary Ferrari did make progress on their car aerodynamically in qualifying as they were closer to pole position than we were expecting but then in the race well one minute off the win and were almost lapped by Lewis Hamilton. So clearly, there is a lot of work to do for the Scuderia during the summer break, going into the final nine Grand Prix, as they still desperately search for that first win of the season. And this is Ferrari's 2019 so far, so they have 288 points, no race wins, three poles, and 11 podiums. And the strategy errors, again, have been very costly for this team as five races, whether it's qualifying or the race during that weekend, have been affected by errors strategically. And let's not forget, of course, the reliability issues. So for me, 2019 so far has been an absolute train wreck as Ferrari continue to showcase why they are nowhere near ready to win a world championship. And the two drivers also showcased this season so far that they are also not ready to win a world championship. As Sebastian Vettel for most of the season has not been that great, even though he has been unlucky at times, he hasn't actually been that great in the Ferrari car. He's had a couple good performances such as Canada and Germany and even Hungary, but a lot of the races have either been bad or just kind of meh. With Charles Leclerc, it's a very Jekyll and Hyde situation. Charles Leclerc is either doing absolutely brilliantly or putting it in the wall. And that basically sums up his 2019. He has been very inconsistent and has been making, by his own admission, way, way too many errors. 
And even though the Ferrari car has not been that good and the strategy has been poor and the reliability has been an issue, you definitely cannot tell me that the two drivers are at their best because they're not. And they both still have work to do to get the best out of themselves on a consistent basis. But going forward for the rest of 2019, Ferrari will have their chances to win a Grand Prix. But knowing them, they will not get it. Because with Ferrari, anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. This team invents new ways of losing. And I am sure they will invent plenty of new ways of losing in those final nine races. But now the final team is Red Bull Racing and their season has been definitely a season of progression. First off, pre-season testing for Red Bull was pretty good as they were mostly reliable and the pace of the car was not too bad. And the first race of the season for Red Bull with Max Verstappen was very good as they got the first podium of the season for Red Bull and Honda's first podium in a very, very long time. But then in Bahrain, Shanghai and Baku, we saw evidence that the Red Bull car aerodynamically was not quite at it yet and wasn't quite working in the way the drivers wanted it to or even the team. The Honda Power Unit was doing fine, but the car did need some work. And at the Spanish Grand Prix, the car did improve as Max Verstappen claimed another good podium finish. And despite not finishing on the podium in Monaco, Max Verstappen was brilliant in that Red Bull car. So there was progression being made, but it wasn't maybe as quick as they wanted it. But then in Canada and France came their two worst races of the season so far in terms of pace, but also result. As their car, even compared to the midfield runners, was not that quick and they were nowhere near the top two teams. And they needed a big improvement as soon as possible. And they did get it at the Austrian Grand Prix, their home Grand Prix, where Max Verstappen got a new front wing. And that new front wing, coupled with Max Verstappen's great driving, allowed him to win the Austrian Grand Prix. In a truly epic drive and surely one of Red Bull's greatest race wins. And from that Grand Prix on, you cannot doubt that Red Bull have just took off. As at Silverstone, Red Bull were very, very quick and they were definitely, with Max Verstappen, going to get a podium. And then at Hockenheim, despite the race being a bit troublesome for Max Verstappen, at times he went on to claim a brilliant win and capitalise on the errors of Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas and Charles Leclerc. Claiming Red Bull's second win of 2019 after only 11 races. And even though they did not get the race win in Hungary, Max Verstappen was able to get his first ever pole position and Red Bull pace-wise with Max Verstappen looked as though they were very, very competitive. And because of the performances and the competitiveness of their car in the last couple races, Red Bull should continue that for the rest of the season. But now let's get on to the drivers. First off, Max Verstappen. Now Max, for me, has been the best driver of 2019. He has consistently got the best out of the Red Bull car, even when the Red Bull car hasn't actually been good enough to finish in certain positions that he has put it in. And he has been pace-wise just fantastic. And I really cannot fault him for any part of this season. And if he continues this level of performance, then I think Red Bull will probably win another two or three races. And given how the Red Bull is progressing and how Max Verstappen is driving, I think Max will probably finish P2 in the drivers and I think Red Bull will probably finish P2 in the constructors as well. But who's that other driver that drives for Red Bull Racing? It's, uh, oh yeah, it's Pierre Gasly. I almost forgot he was a Red Bull driver and driving in a top team because he's been in the midfield for the entire season. And if he told me he was driving a Toro Rosso, I would honestly believe you. Because for about 80% of the season, Pierre Gasly has been absolutely terrible in that car and has been nowhere near Max Verstappen in that car. And I don't see how anyone out there can look at Pierre Gasly and not think that he should be dropped because he has been one of the worst drivers this season. Even worse for me than Lance Stroll. And I am absolutely, in about a week's time, going to make a part two to the part one, the very successful part one, of why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull. Because ever since Canada, he has been even worse. 
And at this point, given how his season has gone so far, his sacking at the end of this season is absolutely inevitable. But for Red Bull with Max Verstappen, I think they are in for a very good final nine races. I don't think at certain tracks such as Spa and Monza, they're going to be competitive enough for the race win. But there will be races such as Mexico, Cota, Suzuka, Brazil, even Abu Dhabi, where I think Max Verstappen might even win those Grand Prix. So the team and driver to look out for for the rest of the season is obviously Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And also look out for Honda at Spa for their new upgrade to the power unit. Because if they can upgrade it as much as they think they can, maybe Red Bull at Spa and Monza will be more competitive than I think they will be. And wouldn't that make for a great Italian and Belgian Grand Prix? But well, that's it for this first part of my mid-season review. But before I go, let's look at the Drivers' Championship standing. So Lewis Hamilton is leading, of course, in P1 of the Drivers. Valtteri Bottas is just about in P2, about to be overtaken by Max Verstappen, who is in P3. Sebastian Vettel is P4, ahead of Charles Leclerc in P5. I think Sebastian does deserve to be ahead of Leclerc so far this season, for sure. Pierre Gasly in the Toro Rosso is in P6 ahead of Carlos Sainz in P7 who has been great this season as I'll get on to tomorrow in my review of the midfield. And then P8 Kimi Raikkonen, P9 Daniel Kvyat mostly because he finished on the podium and P10 Lando Norris. But going ahead for these top teams we are in for a great final nine races of the season because at certain racetracks, we are going to have great battles between different teams and different drivers for the race win. For example, Ferrari at Spa and Monza and even Brazil are going to be very, very competitive for the win. And for Red Bull, they'll be very competitive for the win at Singapore, Suzuka, Cota, Mexico and even Abu Dhabi in Brazil. But the one team that will be there consistently is, of course, the Silver Arrows Mercedes you have to say this season have been absolutely the class of the field. But guys, that has been it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and what did you think of what I had to say based on their seasons so far. But guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there. Or click on my channel name, go to the homepage and subscribe. And hit the notifications bell and also smash the like button down below. And yeah, my next video, which will be the mid-season review of the midfield, will be out tomorrow at 12pm UK time. So until then, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.